Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. Last day of the week. And as we say, uh, what do we say? TGIF, guys? TGIF. <laughs> when you start discussing your Friday night plans on at 7 o'clock in the morning, that you know the weekend is upon <laughs> us, right? But yeah, I mean, it, it's a long day ahead. Lots of big queues lined up. And two days of a sell-off in the market. So let's see what happens today. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, uh, 350 points, basically, in the last two sessions is uh, what we what the market has sold off. So, you know, uh, so the yesterday's context is always, that's the change, 3, 350 down in two days. It's percentage terms in an index, which is about 19 and a half or 1,000. It's not much, but we're not used to it, right? The market's not used to it. And uh, we have taken a bit of a, a knock. Uh, I just want to, before I get to the global stuff, and uh, that'll be important uh, in terms of the handoff this morning, Mid-cap and small-cap indices actually edged higher and ended in the positive yesterday. I mean, actually, both those indices defended their respective 20-day moving averages. The Nifty is down below the 20-day. The Bank Nifty is down below the 20-day. The mid- and the small-cap part of the market, which has been the real uh, sort of, you know, powerhouses, those indices ended above their respective uh, levels. On the Nifty itself, the question is this. I mean, will now, after this correction, after this fall, uh, and we are in that zone broadly, uh, will we defend this 19200 or 19300 kind of level? Will the market kind of, you know, at least for now, bottom out around these levels? Uh, yesterday's price action, I think, does indicate or rather point to it. We'll see. Anyway, let's uh, get you the global queues, right? So global queues are mixed. There's not very much. S&P is down about a quarter percent or so. I think the real queues are coming from the uh, yields market, race market, basically, U.S. bond market. Inflation, uh, uh, yields are trading like inflation is back and a threat. So that's a little surprising, right? Uh, yields uh, last night, uh, the 10-year went up 10 basis points. They were at about 4.18%. They're the highest now since November of 2022. Uh, data came through last night from the US. And, uh, you know, on the face of it, it seems like it's strong. I mean, many I saw many reports saying that uh, weekly US weekly jobless claims were very low. They are low. But if you just go and look a little deeper, the unit cost, uh, the unit labor cost sort of component within the jobless data, uh, that is weakened. The ISM services and, you know, services are the growth engine for the U.S., not manufacturing, services. And services uh, number, although still in the expansionary zone, has uh, cooled off a little bit. Both indicate that, you know, you're just getting the perfect kind of cool off, very gentle, very calibrated kind of cool off, nothing ugly. Right? So that's basically uh, the data point that I wanted to put out. Post-close, uh, uh, you had uh, numbers from Amazon. Numbers are strong. I put out data yesterday which said that 80% of U.S. companies are beating expectations. Amazon, well, uh, that pushes back again. And that's a consumer company, right? That's a retail company. Sells online, but this that's one of the largest retailers, perhaps the largest retailer in the U.S., and a, a good barometer of what the consumer is doing. So those are strong numbers. Uh, there is, of course, Apple as well, but, you know, uh, that's a bit lower. We'll talk more about that, but that's on the higher end luxury uh, kind of segment. Uh, Brent prices, oil prices, they've risen. I mean, they touched $85. Uh, dollars. Saudi Arabia has unilaterally extended its output cut by another month. Uh, and that's a risk. That's a bit of a risk. You, don't, you want oil, you know, at a, at, uh, between 75 and 80 and not uh, between 85 and 90, at least not to stay there. Now, well, let's come to the market, circle back to how things are looking. The Nifty needs a positive close now. We've uh, sold off, as I said, 350 in the last two days. You need, a, you need a solid, decent, positive close. And we need to get our head above the 19,600 level for uh, us to think about higher levels from here. The 40-day exponential moving average comes in at 19,280. I mean, I put out a range yesterday and day before as, as well, which is 19,200 to 19,300. But if you want a level, that's the level on the downside, 19,280. It's not very far away, about 100 points away from where, the, where we closed yesterday. The resistance is the 20-day moving average. That comes in at 19,617. That's a little further away, so perhaps that doesn't get into play today. Uh, on the Bank Nifty, we closed near the July levels, July lows of uh, 44,547. The close was 44,514, right? So we are there. We, th we just need to kind of, uh, that's the first kind of uh, level uh, that uh, you need to uh, watch if the market continues to be above it, trade above it. Banks, uh, Bank Nifty also needs a positive close. The 20-day there is 45,358, which I think, uh, you know, if we are able to end above it, uh, uh, means that maybe uh, there is some repair perhaps which will start to happen. And supports for the Nifty Bank, I mean, if these levels go, uh, uh, come in around these 43,800 to 43,900 uh, kind of levels. Uh, I would say, I mean, you know, perhaps sit out one more day. Uh, that's the, That's been the advice the last couple of days. Don't try and be too cute, try and trade both sides of the market. 
because more often than not, these kind of markets will chop you out. Uh, the gift nifty is indicating a 12, 12 and a half odd point higher start. Oh, Absolutely. I think uh, the line in the sand on the downside is at 19,300 mark, right? The Nifty yeah. has been testing that a couple of times. So we'll watch out for that as a sort of a 